In this video, we're going to be discussing uh, the author of the Ketur Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Shlomo Gansfried, an extremely important Hungarian rabbi. He was born in the year 1804, and he passed away in the year 1886 in Ungvar, Hungary. Uh, he lived there most of his life. Um, he was born in, uh, in, in Ungvar. His father was a, a, a great Torah scholar in his own right, Rabbi Yosef, and he was orphaned at a very young age, I believe the age of six or eight years old. And he was uh, taken in by the city rabbi. His name was Herschel Acharif, Herschel the sharp-witted one. And he really raised him and taught him. Um, eventually, after his, after his marriage, he decided to go into business as a wine merchant, and uh, he moved away. Uh, eventually, he decided to leave business, and he came back to Ungvar and joined the Beisden and became a Dayan on the rabbinical court until his passing. Um, as a rabbi of that period of time, they were fighting uh, the Haskalah movement, the, what today we call the Reformation of uh, attempted reformation of Judaism, really fighting against Judaism and its traditions. And he understood that if that was going to be the case, he was going to have to write a book um, really explaining um, uh, the basic laws. As we discussed in previous videos, there was a, a, a very struggle of, among rabbis of writing uh, long treatises and then losing the law or writing very short and not understanding it. And again, and then as you as you develop the halacha, there becomes debates, then you again, you're, you're confused. Um, he decided he needed to find and write a book that was for the masses. So he wrote a book and he called it the Kitzer Shulchan Aruch, which means the abridged Shulchan Aruch. And uh, he just wrote the, the, the dinim, the, just the, the pertinent, this is how you do it. Um, so, like, if you want to know, can I, can I uh, wash my hands in a certain way or not, you look it up and he tells you exactly what to do. There's no if, ands, or buts, um, just very exact straight to the law. Now, he did not follow the, he did, since it's an abridged version, he did not follow any of the simonim or seifim, the chapters or the subchapters of the previous codes of Jewish law. Um, he wrote his own total th new thing because, again, it's, it's, it's supposed to be for everybody, so it wasn't necessary to follow uh, the other, um, the other uh, um, how would you call it, the previous you know, rabbis of a style. And in fact, uh, he wanted it to be, you know, follow like the order of the day. So he put in, th he, he switched it up. So for example, there are laws of, that should be, let's say in a Yeridea, um, a few laws that are relevant to marriage or to day-to-day -to -day life that are in your days, like the laws of kosher, but it's a bridge version. So he just stuck it in there, part of your day. Um, so it, even though it should be, let's say, in a your day version, but he put it in kind of this or Chaim style, the you know day-to-day -day, day -day laws, he put it in there, if that makes sense. Essentially, in one book, and this is how you do it. And it was printed in his lifetime, but I believe the first uh, printing uh, was in uh, uh, 1864. And it was printed 14 times in his lifetime, which is pretty amazing. And it became extremely popular. Till today, it is something that is studied um, by people. You just need to know the laws. And in fact, Lubav Rebbe spoke about and wrote many letters about teaching people the kids of Shulchan Aruch or similar books that people need to just know what to do, not just, you know, not debate halacha and try to figure out what are the laws and applying it. Just how do I, how do, I do it for the, the, the first, uh, you know, for especially for children or young people or people who don't have a lot of educational Jew, uh, a Jewish educational background, it's a wonderful book and has now been translated at the, in his lifetime it was translated into Yiddish, which was the common language, and it was also translated now into English and many many other languages. Um, if you just want to know what to do, um, it's a wonderful, no wonderful, and very important book, and becomes kind of the basis for many codes that are going to be written later, kind of that style, just. Let's just tell you what to do. Um, as well, uh, later was written a commentary. It was called the Misgeres Hashulchan, which means the border of the of the of the table, and uh, based on the Shulchan Aruch and the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch in this case. And the, and the, uh, this other rabbi, um, he would he agreed to put uh, Rabbi Shlomo Gansfried agreed for him to write it as a border around his Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, and uh, in some versions still today. You can read the Miskarsha Shulchan becomes a very important commentary, and later commentaries are written on the on the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch as well. And, and don't misunderstand, this is an extremely scholarly work. 
even though it is made for the masses, you know, the laws there, uh, while he does take a stricter approach in the Hungarian style, um, he it definitely uh, super, super important for everyone to study. He also uh, wrote a book called the Kesses HaSoifer, which is a like a basic halacha, halacha book for uh, Sofrim, for scribes. He wrote a book called the Pnei Shlomo on the on he you know kind of his essays on the Talmud. He wrote a book called Teres Hazevach for for on the Shechita on the laws of slaughtering, and he wrote a book called Sefer Iparon, which is a commentary on the Torah, uh, and it's every single Torah portion except the Torah portion of Masse, um, which is happens to be is the w- week that he passed away. So kind of a, a little bit of uh, divine providence that the one Torah portion he didn't write is the week he passed away. A very important book, Lechem Vesimla. Uh, which is a laws on the uh, a book on the laws of Nida, which is again very scholarly book studied to this day, um, and in the laws of marital life that he uh, he said was extremely important postic, extremely important codifier in this topic. He wrote a book called Al Leishem, which is the official spelling names of for Gitin for divorce decrees. Um, you have to know how to spell a name, so he wrote a book on that. He also wrote a book called Shem Shlomo on different uh, again on the Talmud and a book called. Sefer Galoi, which was a letter uh, written, uh, an open letter to the Jewish people. So a very important rabbi uh, of the uh, 19th century. Um, at the time, there were others that uh, wrote similar kind of short codes at, at that time, but his was, it was and still is the most accepted and most commented on code of that time and used till this day. Just a quick anecdote. Um, that somebody once said to him, why do you insist, you know, again, it was printed 14 times in his lifetime, why do you insist on calling it the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch? Um, why not, you know, make, you know, this is an important work, this is a scholarly work, why don't you, you know, write it as a, uh, as a standalone, you know, make name it after yourself or whatever. And he said, it says in the, in the verse in Tehillim, uh, shulchan. you shall prepare for me a table. Uh, but he said, it does not say ta'arich which means you shall lengthen. So he felt that, you know, uh, kind of a plan words of that verse in Psalms, he found a source for, you know, the abridged version, that it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a, um, a, uh, a long version. So very uh, interesting uh, little anecdote. Um, and uh, his, his grave, he's buried in Ungvar, and till, the, till today people do visit his grave, a very important Hungarian, uh, in the Hungarian Jewish community specifically, um, a rabbi, and to this day, uh, his works are studied and commented on, and one of the most important uh, codifiers that is used to this day in Jewish law. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any comments, something I should have said, w- uh, could have said, um, or something you disagree with, feel free to put in the comments, and we'll see you next time.